Hello and welcome back to the Element 14 community. My name is Mark and today I have another great project I want to share with you. We are going to build an audio spectrum analyzer. Not like the one behind me which is rather huge and it has uh, some complicated hardware. But instead we're going to use an ESP32 controller with a handful of components. But I promise you the result will be absolutely amazing. So are you curious on how you can build your own spectrum analyzer without spending more than a few bucks? Then this video is for you. I will tell you all about the schematics, the easy hardware was only maybe 10 components or less. I will tell you about the sketch and I will show you how to program it. And regarding programming, I have a special trick up my sleeve. You won't even have to install Arduino environment unless you want to. But first, let me tell you a bit about audio and fast Fourier transformation. To understand the way we hear audio, let's simplify things by looking at a single sound. For example, a pure sine wave of 440 Hz. It sounds like this. We hear exactly what you see in the sine wave that is shown. As most sounds are made up of a mix of frequencies, let's add another. Let's add 523 Hz. You can clearly hear two different sounds. However, what you are really hearing is not two single sounds, but with two sounds coming from the speaker, you will hear the sum of both sounds. This means that sometimes both sounds add up, resulting in a higher amplitude, while at other times the sounds tend to cancel out. The result is a near random looking signal that makes no sense whatsoever. It will even get worse as soon as we add more frequencies. For example, let's add 587 Hz. Now, can you still hear three individual sounds? Again, what you are hearing is a signal far from the pure sine wave. Take a look. Remember that music or voice, or most sounds actually, are a combination of frequencies interacting, resulting in the sound you hear. Now you're probably wondering, how is that going to help us build a spectrum analyzer? Well, let's take another look at the audio signal. As I just explained, we are looking at a mixture of several individual frequencies. To build a spectrum analyzer, we are not interested in this mixture, but instead we want to know all the frequencies that made the signal. We want to reverse engineer the mixing to find our original signals. This can be done using a complicated algorithm called fast Fourier transformation. The explanation of this algorithm is way beyond the scope of this video, so let me simplify things once more. Just remember this for now. A fast Fourier transformation does all the calculations to find out exactly what frequencies are hidden in your signal. Okay, I admit, that's a lot to take in. But bear with me, because I promise you, once you know how it works, it will be a piece of cake explaining it to your friends. Now, let's say the bandwidth of our audio signal is from 20 Hz to 20 kHz. We will divide the total bandwidth into several individual bands. Let's say 7 and we will call them containers. Each container has a limited bandwidth and a different center frequency. Remember our audio signal, it was made up of several individual frequencies. Now the mentioned algorithm will sort out what frequency goes where and put it in the right container. All that is left to do is to see how full each container is and translate it to a readout, like in our case a bar graph. Ok, enough is enough. That was all the classroom stuff for today. Now that you understand how fast Fourier transformation works, let's put it to good use and start building our own spectrum analyzer. For the hardware, we will be using an ESP32 development board, maybe four resistors, a capacitor and a switch and maybe an audio connector. And that's about it. So it's a handful of components. And with only so little components, it's very easy to uh, build this project using a breadboard or a standard PCB. I prepared two options for you that I will show you later. First, let me talk you through the schematics. The schematic is straightforward. In the middle we see the development board DevKit 1 from Doit. I use version 1.0. On the left side we have our audio input, the left and right channel and of course the ground. Both channels are joined together using resistors. The joint audio signal is connected to one side of a capacitor while the other side of the capacitor is connected to our ADC input and also to resistors R3 and R4. When you take a look at the datasheet of the ESP32, you'll see that the ADC input can only handle a positive voltage, 
while our audio signal can be negative and positive. This is why we are creating an offset of approximately 1.6 volts using R3 and R4. Finally, we have a push button, S1, that you can press to change the number of bands or containers during runtime. You can change it to 8, 16, 24, 32 or even 64 channels. Like I said in the beginning, the hardware uses only a few components and you should be able to recreate it without any trouble. To make things easier for you, I have created two examples how you can rebuild this device. On the left side you see a breadboard with all the added components. Just follow the example and it should work. You could also solder up a prototype PCB board. The example is on the right side. Take a good look at the example and take note of the places where I interrupted the copper lanes or where I joined them together. Now that the hardware is done, would you agree to what I said earlier? It's really easy to build, isn't it? Hello, I'm James from Workbench Wednesdays, a show about the stuff found on your electronics workbench. Look for new episodes on, well, Wednesdays. You can connect with me over on the Element 14 community. I look forward to seeing you. For now, it is time to get back to watching this week's project video. Now that the building is done, let's move on to programming. For that, you need to download the sketch from the Element 14 community. The link is below. Now, before you can use an ESP32 with the Arduino environment, you need to install the right libraries. And for that, we go to File, we click Preferences, and then find the line that says Additional Board Managers. Click the icon and make sure you add this line. Don't worry. We put a link below, you can download it from the Element 14 community and you can just install it here. Press OK, again press OK. This means the library, the link to the library is installed. Now we're going to install the library itself. For that we go to Tools and we click Board Manager. In the Board Manager, well, first we have to wait until it's loaded. It might take some time depending on how much library you have installed. In the search bar you click ESP. 32 and ESP32 by Expressive Systems will pop up. Uh, make sure you install it. I have already, that's why my button is grayed out, but in your case you can click it. Uh, once it is installed, make sure you select the appropriate board. The one we are using is uh, board do it ESP32 dev kit. You find that uh, ESP32 Arduino boards and then you find it uh, down here, do it, ESP32 dev kit version 1, that's the one we're using. We can already press compile while I talk you through it. Basically the sketch is made of two files, it's our web spec element, it's the main file and our settings. Let's take a look at the web spec element first. Basically there's nothing in this file that needs changing unless you want to add functionality or you want to make some changes that have quite some impact. But basically you don't need to change it. Of course you can if you want to. In settings however, there are a few parameters you can change. You can change the number of bands. It's now set to 64 and basically this is the number of bands on startup. You can change it to 8, 16, 24, 32 or 64. Uh, we can define um, the mode button. If you have different hardware or you use a different pin, you can change it here. There's gain dampening and noise threshold and those two parameters you might play around with if you see a lot of static which means the bar graphs are already giving you a readout tremendously when there's no signal. You might change it here. Then we have speed filter, which basically it's a delay time for the bars that are falling down and it makes it more smooth. If, if the number is too high, then it will become quite nervous to look at. We have the sample frequency and the sample block. I recommend you leave them the same, don't change them. And then we have, of course, our band cutoff tables. For each number of channels, for each group there is a different parameter. Let's take the one for eight channels. First you see the, the cut of table. Uh, now it's 100 Hz, 250, 500, etc. You might change it, but make sure that uh, they're sequential. That means uh, this one should always be higher than the one before it. And the list goes on. Then we have the labels of course. Basically that's what it would be shown on screen. And the same goes for the 16 band, the 24, 32 and 64. And basically that's, that's all uh, there is to it. If you want to dig into the code, I put comments there and you can uh, read through it if you want. Feel free to change it. And if you, if you have any questions, make sure to let me know. Now, uh, I see it's still compiling. It's uh, 
quite a sketch, so we'll wait for that. You know, it's done compiling, so I know the sketch works. Now basically, you hook up your ESP32, you select the right COM port, in my case it's COM8, and you press this one. It means compile and upload, and it's going to upload your code, and that's it, you're good to go. Okay, it can be quite a hassle, right? I mean, you have to install the Arduino EDA, the libraries, you have to um, install the right board manager, open the sketch, uh, compile it, upload it, so many things can go wrong. What if I tell you there's an easier way? I already compiled it for you. And you can use your internet browser to simply upload it directly to the ESP32. However, this only works if you go using the unmodified sketch. If you're planning to do modifications uh, to the sketch, maybe you want to add extra functionality or change the, the noise or the delay uh, parameters, then of course you have to recompile it and upload it using the Arduino EDA. But for everyone else, let me introduce web browser programming. Thanks for sticking with us. It's time to reward you with something that's probably the most easiest way of programming ESP32 you'll ever see. Just go to the following website and press install. Select the appropriate COM port and make sure your ESP32 is hooked up with the USB connector. Press connect and it'll start programming. It's as easy as that. Just wait until it reaches 100% and you're good to go. That's all there is to it. If you use the web browser to program your ESP32, it's safe to say that the programming was even easier than the hardware. And the hardware itself wasn't hard, was it? Well, it's time for a demo, don't you think? Let's see what we've built. Let's take our ESP32 that we have programmed and put it into the board we've just created. Now all you need to do is power it up. When you boot it for the first time, the device has no memory of your networks, so it will start as an access point. You have to connect to the access point using your cell phone or any other Wi-Fi enabled device. And the minute you connect, it will start the Wi-Fi manager. Here you can enter your credentials, like your network and password, and press save. After a reboot, it will now be part of your network, and you can access it by going to the appropriate IP address. This is all I have to show you for today in this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. We at the Element 40 community love to see your build, especially if you made modifications or added extra functionality. Let us know in the comments. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I will uh, try to answer all of them. And actually, I'm also curious, how many screens did you use? Because theoretically, the number of screens to, to use while watching is endless. Tell us all about it. Until then, I'll see you next time.